on this side. Now all that is the action of the lure. And you can see how much more that, that rod's bent than this one over here on this side. We know there's silvers in the river. The water looks great. Yeah. Push on, push on. Go ahead and throw that buoy. Perfect. Well, I guess we can't count it until it's in the net, can we? That props to you guys. This is definitely the thickest, not number-wise, but definitely thickness-wise of silvers I've had. These are some big, big silvers. Nice. We are due to be into the Anchorage airport at just about 25 past the hour. The first message I got is right before we're getting on the plane is there's too many fish. It's an emergency order. And that means they're raising the limit on the, on the Kenai River. And that's the kind of emergency I want to be a part of. Get your rod, get some more gear, and get to the river. We're staying at the Kenai River Red Lodge. It's just a couple of miles outside the town of Soldatna. Big house, right on the river, three stories. We've got 12 people in our group, and we've got to have a, a bedroom, a bed for everybody, and we were able to find it at this place. Soldatna has 4,100 full-time residents, live there year-round, but in June, July and August, the town just fills up. It can have 10 times the amount of people by June, 50,000 people or more. But when the kids go back to school, everything changes. When we got to town, people are asking us, are you here for the hunting? And uh, we said, no, we're here to fish. And that's the funny thing, the, the whole attitude in the community is, is centered around hunting in September. And even our fishing guides, they've got to bear tags and, and moose tags in their pockets. We hit the river first thing in the morning. We're fishing with Corey and Taylor. Corey Toombs is the guide on our boat. He's fishing for Chet's guide service. Chet couldn't be there because Chet's out bear hunting. So we're fishing the Kenai. We're, we're here in September and we think it might rain today. And uh, in fact, it's been raining just as soon as we pulled into the park here. We're gonna be running downstream. Hey, Taylor. And um, gonna be pulling in real tight close to the bank. And we're here to catch silver salmon, also called cohos and my favorite of the salmon. We're trying to time this for early September to, to be here when there's plenty of fish in the river and that's what we're expecting today. We're gonna to go down to Graveyard and just pull up next to that bank. So get it done. All right. My name is Corey Toombs. Um, I've lived here for 23 years. I was born and raised here and uh, I love the outdoors, so I love that I can go fishing, hunting. You got all the time of years for all the different species. You got ice fishing. Um, you can go hunting during the spring, the fall. Um, you can hunt bears during the, the summer, and you can go snow machining or four wheeling or snowboarding. Anything you can think of, this is the place to go for the outdoors. So.
these big silvers start hitting the rivers around here in August. And what they're doing is they're staging at the mouths of the rivers and then heading up. And it could be these little creeks like uh, Deep Creek or the Anchor River. It could be the um, Nanilchik River. So we have two options. You can either fish this fishing hole right here. It's called Graveyard. Yeah. Um, it's better the fish, two fishing holes with the one behind us. Uh, but we're not going to be able to uh, fish side by side if we do that. We can either spit here between these two boats or drop down, or we can fish that one and fish side by side, so it's up to you. Let's pull in here, let's fish the best water. Okay, sounds good. I've forgotten my rain pants. This is about the dumbest thing a person could do. Jennifer doesn't have any rain pants either. It's gonna be a miserable day, but we know that the river's full of fish, and we're here to try and do our part because there's a lot of fish to catch, and maybe we can get uh, three silvers today. Just drop the anchor off the right side, hold the line. We'll slowly drip down. One for you. Mm -hmm. Have you hold on to this right here. All this is is a quick fish wrapped with sardine. This right here, the eye, this is actually how you uh, tune it. So if it's going this way, whatever way it's leaning towards, you do the opposite right here. You bend it slightly with the pair of pliers. So and that's how you tune it to make sure the action of the lure is right. You can see the current's a little stronger on this side, and all that is is the action of the lure. And you can see how much more that, that rod's bent than this one over here on this side. So all it is is that's swimming harder than this section because of the current. And then when a fish hits it, it'll just bend in half and stay solid, so. We know there's silvers in the river. The water looks great. Yep, this one, this one's okay. Go ahead and throw that buoy. The silver I hooked yesterday was about five pounds um, on the small side. What are they running? Usually they're an average silver probably on this river is roughly anywhere from seven to 13 pounds. So they're pretty good size. The genetics in this river are second on to any other river in Alaska, so. Yeah, it certainly produces the biggest kings. Yep. And so you would expect that the silvers would be big too. So yep. that's good to hear. I hope to see one. Glad we're not out on the ocean today. It's blowing and raining. We know there's silvers in the river. The water looks great. And we're, we're fishing a quick fish with a, a sardine wrap on it. Should be good bait for, for this water. And I think what we're going to do here in a few minutes is, is probably move up into the next slot upstream. Corey's got a game plan figured out here and we're hoping to get a fish um, to bite here pretty quick. We moved up to a new spot. What's this one called, Corey? It's the same fishing hole. It's okay. Higher up on the actual so graveyard. this is upper graveyard. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. We know that the fish are going to be pushing through. They're going to run right into our hardware. Some of them are going to go around it and uh, then keep on going upstream. And for others, it's an irritation or maybe one more chance to, to grab a meal because these fish are right out of the salt water. Their scales haven't set yet. They've got sea lice on them. These fish are gonna be hot. Right now we're transitioning to the fall period of the year due to the rain and all the high winds and everything that's getting into the river um, with flooding and stuff like that. We have a problem with the uh, water not being as clear and that affects our fishing when it comes to the silvers. Um, we try to find the cleanest water as possible during this time. But as you can see with all the high winds that we have going on right now, you can never really predict uh, what kind of weather we're going to have at this time of year. So. Yep, fish on, fish on. Okay, get that. Oh, it popped oh, out right popped there. Out. Yep. I, I just saw the fish in it. Yep. Oh, there's one, there's one. There's one. Here it is, here it is. Oh, that's a big one. Here it is. Still taking line or? Okay, we're good. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep the tip nice and low like you did last time. Go ahead and throw that buoy. If the fish decides when it gets close, it wants to go underneath because the wind's going to be blowing the boat around. Go ahead and stick the rod all the way in the water. You don't want it touching at all. Okay, go ahead and step back a tiny bit. Don't reel anymore. Let go, let go, let go. Okay, go ahead and reel. Go ahead and reel. Keep reeling. Oh, keep reeling. Stop. 
Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. It's a good size silver right there, nice and fresh, super bright. This is a hard one silver right here. Jennifer, are you cold? I'm a little bit are cold. Are you wet? Yes. So what have you learned about um, fishing in Alaska so far? It's a little bit cold and wet. Yes. I just looked at Dad, I looked at Jennifer, I started laughing, I couldn't help myself. This is as miserable as I have been on a fishing trip in a long time. It's just a passing squall. The weather's beautiful up here. It's any better if we get in a suntan. We've got two boatloads of guys out here. Our boat and then the other boat with Taylor, who is their guide on that trip. They're working hard to get that three fish limit. They're, they're drenched too, just like we are. They've gone farther down river and they're catching these fish just right out of the salt. They're fishing eggs, and those those eggs produced for them right away, and then things begin to change. They had to put a quick fish out, and then that one got bit, and then pretty soon they're running quick fish just like we were upstream. The sea lice are, are still white on the bodies of these fish, and they'll turn, they'll start to turn color after they've been in fresh water just a little bit, and then their scales, the fish's scales will set. The fish that we were catching were were so so bright they were blue the, the backs were blue and and their their flanks were chrome i couldn't believe how big some of these fish were we got one in our boat that equals two that's my boy <laughs> well i guess we can't count it folks in the net can we man look at this size. Okay, Jen, you good to go? Good to go. Okay, back to the river. Back at it. Yes, sir. Dried out, new clothes. My brain's working better now. So it sounds like they've got one in their boat and uh, we got one in our boat, that equals two. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy. Hold on one second. Let me have this weight go by before you throw the anchor. The reverse just to get the boat to come back. Because the wind is uh, actually pushing us forward. What I've noticed about his sardine wraps here is that he's being really clean and, and careful with them. He makes his cut, he gets his little sardine steak and then makes a little clip in it, but he's being really careful to keep it clean. And so he's trimming off the um, parts that have been exposed to the, the guts of the sardine and keeping it um, as, as clean as possible and as fresh. And so that's the point of using these, these rubber gloves to, to keep the human scent off the baits because it's these little details that are gonna make the difference on, on a lot of days. Let's see if we can get him in here fairly quick. Hold on, don't reel anymore. Just keep the bit as much as possible. If you have to, go ahead though. I'll just have you guide them over here to the slower current if you can. Okay. Two for our boat. Well, I guess we can't count it till it's in the net, can we? Man, look yes. at this size. Oh. It was about to pop out, so oh, I had I to throw the net out, where and then half his body's like sitting there like flopping on the rim. Yeah. Oh, there's a fat silver. There you go, guys. I thought that was a small one, the way it acted early in the battle. And 
I think because I didn't put too much pressure on it, we were able to keep it from jumping. And the more they jump, the uh, easier it is to lose them. And we kept that one from going airborne. Sometimes you can't. Jen's was one of the hardest fighting silvers I've ever seen. Now we can call it two in the boat. Pull in all the lines, pull in all the lines. He's taking line. You want to keep that tension on the rod at all times. It's another big one. It's another big one. Keep reeling. Okay. Go ahead and step towards me. Keep him in the water as much as possible. Come through. Okay, you're fine, you're fine. Here we go. Okay, give me some wine. There you go. Woohoo! Man! Yeah! Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, dude. Still kind of spazzing a little bit, but yeah. it's already knocked out. So. Okay. I like it. It's a good sized fish. Alright, guys, we're gonna head back up. So if I can have everyone sit down and we're gonna go get their anchor. Let's go back to the same spot, Corey. I like it. Real, 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 and then keep it right there. You want to keep it just like that. Okay. Don't build any more. You want to keep it down. There you go. Perfect. Props to you guys. This is definitely the thickest, not number wise, but definitely thickness wise of silvers I've had. These are some big, big silvers. You got sea lights on your gin right there. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Well, what do you think? Can we go back to the same hole? Yeah. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Grab it. Reel on this side one real quick. And then come up here and reel this one up for me okay. real quick. I think I've got a double. double. Jennifer, throw the buoy. Don't throw the buoy till I tell you to, okay? Maybe we're tangled, huh? No, no, no. No, no. We got a double. Okay, Jen, I want you to come come do this fish as soon as you throw it loose. Hold on. Yeah. If one fish goes this way, one fish goes this way, we're, we're in a worse case scenario than we are right now. Where this guy's, he's right here. Right now. Okay, hold on. Keep him in the water, keep him in the water, keep him in the water. Whoa. Go ahead, throw the buoy, throw the buoy. Throw it off, throw it off. Keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Okay, let him down, let him down, let him down. Come towards me. Keep all the way, all the way, all the way. Okay, pick up, pick up, pick up. Keep towards the motor. Give me some line. Yep. Don't worry about it. He starts jumping around. Hand me the other net. Okay, we're going to start floating super fast. But then you had a lot of line on this reel. The only thing to remember is this is the this is the handle that's turning on the rod. Okay, so just get in touch with it. How far out are we? Good job. Keep reeling, keep reeling. Okay, I lost it. Bam. Yeah. Yeah. We were close. All right. There you go. We weighed them in at 13 pounds, 14 and a half pounds, the biggest for our boat. We're catching them just as hot as they can be, the very prime of their physical condition. I believe this one's yours. sea lice on here, Jen, right there. This fish probably had several of them on it, and as they come into the fresh water, then the sea lice die, and they turn this color, and then uh, they'll, they'll eventually fall off. But uh, this one, we got to it first. 
All right, we're gonna head back up. We'll get that retied, get this untangled, and get those other two rods in the water, so. Well, things are really picking up. It's a lot of fun, we even had a double. Let's go get some more. Five, five, five. Okay, we're tight. Go ahead and give me some more. Wow! Wow! What a fish! Woo. What a fantastic fish! Whoa! How cool are you holding that? You're good. <laughs> the props to you guys. This is definitely the thickest, not number wise, but definitely thickness wise of silvers I've had. These are some big, big silvers, so. These are all on the upper, upper parts of the average silvers, for sure. It's been a great day fishing on the Kenai. Right, Jen? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, summer is on the way out, and we are catching the tail end of this silver run here on the Kenai. It's September in Soldatna. Here we are on the Kenai. Finally. Right here. I'll take one. <laughs> 